Hi, Lori Brown here. Think about all the content, all the stuff that gets pushed at you on the internet that you didn't ask for, that is not welcome, that is unwanted. Well, you tuning into PonderCast is not that situation. You have sought us out. You have made a point of coming to hear PonderCast. And because of that, you rock my world. If you think it's important to make a distinction between the kind of stuff that arrives at your ears unbidden and the kind of content that you really want, I'm hoping you're going to make a monthly donation at Patreon to support the artists and creators who are out there struggling to be heard in all the noise of the internet. Go to patreon.com slash pondercast and make a monthly donation. And we'll make it worth your while. Okay, let's go. Let's pondercast. When I first thought about doing a podcast, I wanted it to be a place where I could talk about anything, where anything and everything that the world tossed up would be fodder for Pondercast. And in the era of narrow casting and the elevator pitch and fractured attention spans and 120 character conversations, what was I thinking? I think I was thinking like we all think. Not about how podcasts market. I wasn't thinking about playing in the attention economy we now live in. I was simply following how my head and heart worked and how I believe yours does too. So in the spirit of a podcast about everything, I now give you a podcast about nothing. Seinfeld would approve. I'm not even sure we know what nothing is anymore. It kind of sounds like um, it would be ripe for a treatment in a Hollywood blockbuster. Imagine a world with no expectations, no responsibilities, no drama, no politics, no deadlines, nowhere you have to be. A world that asks nothing of you. There is nothing to do, nothing to fix, nothing to change, nothing to resist. The world of nothing, coming soon. Can you imagine a world of nothing? What would that feel like? In the pie chart of life, the simplest pie chart that is imaginable, 
there are just two equal slices. One I call doing, and the other being. Or, as described by our tyrannically busy culture, doing nothing. Oh, it's so hard to get rid of that word, doing. But let's chuck it for this episode. It's not doing nothing. It's something entirely different. It's being. It's hard to make that move from doing to being. When did it become so hard? The advent of the electric light? Or does living in a city kind of kill that for you? When was it for you? When you got your latest job? Or kids arrived on the scene? Or when you finally got high-speed internet? Not enough being, too much doing. How to get back at least a decent piece of that pie? I hope this episode will help. If only I could be there with you right now to help you, to run blocking for you. Um, I'd answer your door or your phone. I'll do the dishes. You just go sit. No, let me turn off the TV. I'll take the kids for a walk. I'll fold your laundry. Whatever it takes to help you carve some space and time around yourself. For nothing except being... I sat on my couch for a year and a half and did nothing. When life slams you into a wall, you get a crash course in being. A divorce, only getting to see my children half time, and quitting my job in television all at the same moment, everything I had been doing was done. And so I sat on my couch and I looked out the window. Feeling frozen in place, shell-shocked, depressed. It was like I had jumped out of a speeding car. That had been the pace of my life, and then nothing. Actually, less than nothing, with not being able to see my kids for a week at a time. Oh, my mind was still racing, yes, And my heart was pounding as I sat on the couch and watched the seasons change. And along with the seasons, I changed too. That was almost 15 years ago. And yet looking back on that time now, I see it as a luxury, which is really weird to say out loud because it was the worst time of my life. Still, In the middle of all of that, I had tons to be grateful for. I could actually manage to pay the bills while I sat on my couch for a year and a half, and that was huge. Oh, I tried looking for a job, but nothing worked, (laughs) including me. And all that time, staring out the window, wrapped in a blanket, curled up on my couch, something happened in all that nothingness. It was like this. You're wading out in a lake, kind of a sandy but muddy bottom filled with old leaves, and there's this murky cloud being kicked up all around your feet. And every time you move, you stir up more and more mud, and you can't see anything in the water. You want to know where you're stepping, what you're stepping on, and it's kind of freaking you out, not knowing what you're going to step on. There is only one thing to do, and that's stop. 
stop moving and wait and wait patiently for the water to clear and for all that mud you churned up to slowly drop again to the lake floor. How long do you think it would take for you to stand in the middle of your life for the waters around you to become still, for the waves to turn to ripples and then finally to stillness? Oh, stillness, that elusive thing, what we yearn for and, and chase after with all our doing, it suddenly and miraculously and so simply comes to us. All it takes is an invitation. All it takes is stopping and just being and calmness and clarity will eventually show up. What you are doing right now, nothing, is an act of political resistance. Screw capitalist productivity. Screw Facebook and Instagram and their relentless attack on your attention. Keeping you from what you really want and need. Real connections with everything and everybody around you. What might happen if we can learn to step away from this attention economy, refuse its advances, what might we start to see and feel once the water turns clear again? Practicing just being at first feels like an escape, like you're running away, but you're not. You are staying in place. You are simply refusing the hundreds of attempts to drag your attention away from what's actually happening. Your attention is the most precious commodity, and yet we give it away for free again and again and again. Ooh, am I part of the problem? Here you are, listening to a podcast, directing your precious attention my way. Um, yes, but I want to gift your attention back to you. 
to help you carve out some time to just be. How many moments in a day must you steal back to get a pie chart that looks even close to even slices of doing and being? People, this is going to take some work to find new ways to step into being and to take back attention, to empty time, and to take back your attention is, well, it's feels like two opposite things happening at the same time. Let distractions drain away and feel your attention return to you, filling up that scene in front of you. It's like you're sitting in a bath when the water has turned cool. You pull the stopper out and let the water drain, and at the same time, you fill the tub up with more hot water. Making the move from doing to being can be a rush, emptying and filling at the same time. Think of the phrase, come to your senses. I mean, we all know what it means, to suddenly stop doing something foolish or pointless, to to come to an understanding, to see the right path. But it's interesting that it's senses and that understanding involves every faculty we have, all five or six of them. Sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch intuition. Coming to your senses means sensing everything around you on the outside and the inside of your body. Coming to your senses isn't about thinking your way through to a solution. It's about using everything you've got. How to show up completely on the inside and the outside. How to all arrive in the same moment, this moment. Oh, what a great gathering that would be to be able to connect everything all at once, to include the color of the sky and the sound of the wind and the sound of your refrigerator and the light falling on that table and your hands on the mug, the heat of the mug and the heat of the dark, hot center in that knot in your stomach. The skittering, endless train of thoughts moving through you, they will never leave you completely. But when every sense shows up in this moment, they fade. Your attention is bigger than your brain now. You have come to your senses. Waiting for the water to clear, just being, is an invitation. For clarity, a sense of calm, remembering who you are again, in that stillness that you have created, you will hear something the world has been trying 
to distract you from. You. At any moment, on any day, this act of resistance, this shift of attention is available to you and waiting for you to come to your senses. (laughs) 